Welcome back. In today's episode, we speak with Chantel Keefe. She's the owner of Image Media Consulting, a small boutique social media firm helping entrepreneurs gain more presence and more business. She talks about the top trends right now in social media and what you need to know. Welcome to this edition of Peak Performers Podcast with your host, Thor Conklin. Thor will be sharing the necessary tools, strategies, and psychology you'll need to become a peak performer in any area of your life or business. Thor Conklin here. We give you the tricks, the tips, the tools, the strategy, the technology, and the psychology peak performers use in order to get more done and execute at the highest level. If you know what to do but struggle with getting it all done, or simply want to raise your game to the next level, this podcast is for you. Sit back and enjoy. Chantel Keith was an entrepreneur from a young age. Before the age of 12, she had started a clothing line. She then turned her attention to publishing and started publishing a monthly neighborhood newsletter at age 12. She studied entrepreneurship at Florida State University. After college, she moved to Chicago to start her wedding planning company. After one too many winters and a couple bridezillas, she decided that might not be for her. She was looking for a new business opportunity. One day, while skimming through social media, she came across a pie shop. She couldn't tell if it was open, couldn't tell what they were serving, and quite frankly, just skipped by them. She realized in that moment, however, there are so many small businesses that do not have a strong social media presence. From running her first company, she knew the importance that social media played in attracting customers. She decided in that moment that she was going to create Image Media Consulting to help small businesses gain traction to attract new customers and more revenue. Chantel, thank you so much for joining us today. I know the audience is going to get so much out of the interview today. I gave the uh, the bio. It was so interesting to hear that the business started from a pie shop. And you're visiting a pie shop. <laughs> Bring us back there a little bit. And wh- what what has it been like since that time? Yeah. Um, well, thanks so much for having me, Thor. I'm really excited to be on the show today. It, it has been a whirlwind, truthfully. It's been three and a half years now since the start of the business. Um, and when we say it started from a piece of pie, it truly did. Um, as a consumer, I was looking for the best piece of pie in Atlanta and stumbled across a Facebook page and couldn't figure out if they were open or um, what flavors they had and was was not interested in calling or driving across town to find out. So sparked an idea and we found a niche and we've been rocking and rolling ever since. Help, you know, help out my generation. I'm uh, <laughs> what, what am I? I'm a baby boomer. Uh, I just like on the last year of being a baby boomer and you know, business has changed so much. I've been an entrepreneur for the last 16 years and this whole area of social media really just, it, it just bothers us. You know, I think if you're over 40, probably over 50 at this point, it's just not something that we're used to. How do you work with companies and what do you tell business owners that say, I know I got to do something. I just don't have the time to do it. Yeah, well, they would probably be one of our perfect (laughs) clients. But there's a whole education component of what we're doing. We want to make sure all of the business owners and partners we're working with understand the value of social media. I think we're definitely over the hump that they know they need to be on it. But now it's just explaining the value, um, impressions and brand awareness, and really what that can mean for a company. Yeah, so we have to work with people people all the the time that kind of ask us and get frustrated. Um, Sounds just like you. Where, where do you where do you recommend that people start nowadays? Well, e- platform wise, yes, it's different for every business. Truthfully, um, we build custom proposals for all of our clients based on their industry needs and the scope of the project. But we wouldn't maybe suggest Instagram uh, per se for you know a more B two B business. So we would probably lead them more towards LinkedIn. So. Um, our best guidance in this scenario is to suggest one or two platforms and really be hyper-focused on those platforms to start, master those, and then start to develop some others um, if you're going to handle it on your own. So again, each business is so different, I think. But if I were to generalize, I would say Facebook is still a great tool um, tool to use. Facebook, Instagram has been huge for us. So if you are... Kind of in the B2C space, I'd say Instagram too. 
Now, on Facebook, obviously, that's changing all the time mm-hmm. as well. When you say very, uh, I don't know the word you use. I forget, it, was it very active or, or very engaged? Well, give me an idea of what that would look like. Yeah, so unfortunately, with all of the algorithm changes on Facebook, um, it's certainly pay to play. So you have to put some ad spend into boosting your posts and you know doing some targeted ads. Um, but especially if your demographic's a little bit older, that's still the platform that they are comfortable with. Um, so ways to when you ask kind of ways to increase engagement, again, some of that goes into paid spend behind it, but also coming up with clever captions and telling that story online, asking questions, getting them involved, maybe having them vote on your next product launch or giving their opinion on something is a great way to increase that engagement on Facebook. Now, one of the things that we just started was a Facebook group, and it seems Mm -hmm. like a lot of that is moving towards the group. Can you speak a little bit about that? Yeah, we've we've seen a lot of success with some of our antique and furniture uh, consignment stores. They've created a private Facebook page, and it creates this um, illusion and appeal that you know they are the behind the scenes viewers. So I do see some validity and some value in the private Facebook groups. I, I just think it depends again on how, what your business is. What sort of trends do you see developing in the social media area right now? What are they moving towards? Moving away from? Definitely video. Video is huge. Um, Instagram stories, Snapchat, um, any live streaming, so Facebook Live. That is certainly the direction it's going in. Um, People are bombarded with words every day, so the visual side of things is is extremely strong. Um, So I would say video is something that we should all be keeping on our radars and figuring out how to move in that direction. Does it get to the point where you could actually be posting too much or too involved? Is is there a a saturation point where you're Customers, your market just kind of turns against you? Certainly. um, But using Facebook again, you're posting pretty often, but unless you're paying for every single post to be boosted to your target audience, they're not very likely to see you. So it's a really great landing page. Um, A lot of our businesses essentially use it as kind of a a blog platform of, of sorts. So when someone does stumble across your business and want to learn more about your company, and they head to your Facebook page, they can see that you're the thought leader in the space, um, the expert in the industry, and kind of know what you're talking about. So yes, you don't want to be posting you know, three to seven times per day on Instagram because that will certainly saturate and people will unfollow you. Um, but it depends on which platform we're talking about and how often you are posting. Do you see any new emerging platforms that really haven't caught the, the eye of the public yet that you think could be the next thing? Um, you know, in our, in our Monday, Monday meetings, we're always talking about the social media news and and staying up to date with what's going on. I I think that YouTube shouldn't be overlooked. Um, although it's not new, it's something that traditionally people haven't really thought about as, as kind of one of those core social media platforms, but because video is so huge, I think that's going to continue to grow. Um, we haven't stumbled across any apps that are new, although WhatsApp and some of the messaging apps are also where where things are headed, especially for the millennial generation and younger. Yeah, I would say messaging apps are also something we should keep a lookout on. Interesting. I have a friend in California in Silicon Valley that is developing a new app, and it's a messaging app, and it suggests what you should write back. So as you're in a conversation, it has kind of an artificial intelligence connected to it, so it'll start to suggest, oh, why don't you tell them this? I'm like, that's really interesting. That it, that is <laughs> certainly a lazy man's dream. Uh, ah. Yeah, <laughs> it, it, you know, I guess you still have to do some, but it, it'll offer some suggestions and start to learn what kind of your responses are to things. That's neat. Yeah, he's uh, he's raised a bunch of money for it, and uh, I think it's coming out probably in the next six months. Cool, I'll interesting. have to keep my eyes out for it. Yes, I think it's uh, N I. I'm sorry, I N V I or something something okay. along those lines. Interesting guy. You can follow up with me uh, after, and I'll, I'll tell you what it, tell you what it is. Okay. Now, you are 24, 25? 28. 28, okay. 25. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, if you ever meet her, you, you'll think she's 22. Uh, I thought you were never supposed to ask a lady how old she is. Well, when, when, when I'm 53, I can ask anybody their age under 40. That's <laughs> <laughs> how did you, at such a young age create such an awesome business what were you know what was the strategies what made you successful 
Well, thanks. Um, I'm, I'm still kind of trying to define success and see what that means. But I would say I um, haven't really been afraid of trying different things. Um, looking back, I think I've started and failed at five or six different companies, um, all the way from when I was super little and created this clothing line called Tough to Be Tall and just ironed on thing, you know, things on t-shirts. I mean, it's so silly, but I don't think that um, I was ever told, you know, you couldn't do something if you didn't try hard enough. So maybe what has lent some of the success is not being afraid to fail. I agree with that. That's awesome. Thanks. That is awesome. What uh, what are some of the other uh, failures? Um, I started a, a newsletter, a weekly, excuse me, monthly newsletter for our neighborhood called 12 Lakes News. And I did sponsorships and advertising for the real estate agents in the neighborhood when I was 12. Um, I mean, it didn't fail. It just, I, it was fleeting and right. I, I lost interest. <laughs> um, I had a wedding planning company prior to starting Imagine Media. Loved it and found a lot of success in that as well, but didn't enjoy spending the weekends with some bridezillas. So, yeah. yeah it's just That's a awesome. You know, I have a uh, Facebook group that I was talking about, and literally on Fridays, we have Failure Friday. And it's a it's a crew uh, crew racing, you know, where the, the skulls and the, the race boats, and it's sunk. And these guys are just sitting there up to their waist in water, and their boat sunk. And it has a little smiley face. And on Fridays, we share the failures that we've had in business and what we've learned from them. Because I truly believe it's not about avoiding the failures. It's just go out there, give a shot. If it fails, great. Learn something from it. Keep moving on. Oh, yeah. No, I agree. Even those tough conversations, I hate, you know, having to either have tough conversations with clients or the team. But if you didn't have those, you would never learn a lesson and, and grow. So I completely agree. Business is all about execution. It doesn't matter what you know. It's what you're able to execute on. How do you execute every day? Well, I have, and this may be a later question, but I have a little tip um, or way that I prioritize. And I use this thing called a life planner. You might actually know Matt Granados yes. as well. But I love it. And that is how I prioritize every day. If you check out lifeplanner.guru, um, you can order one of these planners. But essentially, it's a way that I can brain dump at the beginning of the week to really kind of fresh my mind for the beginning of the week and then prioritize each day based on what's urgent, not urgent, important, not important. So yeah, executing, I mean, you have to just really kind of prioritize every minute of the day because there's a lot of moving parts. What does your uh, early morning look like? I'm working on that. Ideally, I'd love to get up and do yoga at 6 a.m. Haven't been able to do that yet, but that is in the pipeline. Um, so right now, I'll usually walk the dog around 7.30, um, listen to a podcast on the walk, come home, eat breakfast, get ready, and head to the office around 8.30. Well, that uh, already it's intelligence showing that you're listening to podcasts. <laughs> I recommend that to everybody. Yeah, no, I love them. I got cereal. Uh, Did you ever listen to the cereal podcast? I have not, no. It's, it's certainly not business related, but it's just more fun. Um, got me onto the podcast, and now I listen to business podcasts, which is... A good step, I suppose. <laughs> there are a lot. I mean, it's a, it's a great platform, and there's anything that you want to know is uh, is out there. You just have to look for it. Mm -hmm. Creating energy in order to show up to work and really being able to execute at the highest level is so important. Besides yoga, what do you do to create energy for yourself? Uh, can I answer what I would say we do for the team? Absolutely. Okay, great. So we have a daily huddle Tuesday through Friday. Nine o'clock, someone on the team starts to play music. And at 9.03, we're all standing around in a circle. And we go around and we first say our priorities of the day, second, our challenges. And then the third go around, we have a shout out moment. So anyone on the, on the team can shout out someone else. Um, so it just, it creates some synergy and energy in the morning that we're all on the same page. We know what we're working on. Um, it gives me the opportunity to see you know, some process, something that needs to be fixed or a challenge that someone's struggling with that I could help. Um, and I think it's just really nice to start the day um, with a positive shout out to someone else and recognize them for something great that they did. That's awesome. We have a daily yeah. huddle as well, and they're very, very effective. If you're not using that in your business, it's simply a five or 10 minute meeting to get everybody on the same page. And it's, yeah. it's so 
interesting to see how just a day goes by and you think everyone's on the page and it's like, well, wait a second, didn't we talk about that yesterday? Didn't we agree today was going to be about this? It's interesting mm-hmm. how quickly a team can get off track. Now, yeah. go ahead. And we, and we found that after we started to implement those, typically the first half an hour of the day from 9 to 9.30, people were just kind of, you know, moving around and, and chit-chatting. And now, you know, they, they'll now get in at 8.45, 8.30 to get their coffee and get settled. And then right after that meeting, you know, we all hit the ground floor running, which I think is great. And what time does uh, work start in the morning? Well, everyone has to be there at 9.03. So I would okay. suppose then. Yeah. And what happens if they're late to the meeting? Well, they have to send their updates to kind of the person in charge of that week, their huddle notes. Okay, but what? Let, let's say they're just running late and they get there at 9.05. What do you do? Well, I'd love to get your advice on that. We haven't done um, any punishment or kind of – we just – we keep going. We don't wait for them. Okay. Um, so maybe there's some sort of kind of well, public like, embarrassment. Well, <laughs> you have too nice of a company. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? I just shoot them. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> we go through employees Set quickly. In mind. Oh, no. <laughs> no, we don't cause any bodily harm to anybody. <laughs> um, you know, it really depends on what I found in, in, uh, in my teams and my organizations. It depends on the individual. And if someone is constantly being late and you're starting to meet, I never hold up the meeting. It just it starts. Mm-hmm. And if they don't get the hint real quick that they've got to be there on time because there's only early and late, that's it. There is no on time. If they can't keep on to get there on time, they're just not right for the team, and we just end up cutting them uh, mm-hmm. because that lack of respect for their other members of the team shows up in all aspects of their business uh, life and, and in their life in general. Yeah, no, I agree. For the last 16 years, I've been driven by the question of why some people achieve amazing results and others don't. The answer? 90% of their success came from their psychology. So if 90% of their success comes down to their psychology, what was the one thing that enabled them to produce the results that others were not? Their ability to execute. Their ability to get things done. Now, we all know how to get things done, but some of us do it better than others. And some of us are not even coming close to tapping our potential. So if you're truly committed to tapping your potential and really becoming a peak performer, and getting the results that you need, want, and desire, take your phone and text the word BE Summit. That stands for Business Execution Summit. One word, BE Summit, and text that to 41411. I'm going to send out some additional information on our upcoming event that will truly teach you the science of execution. Thank you so much for listening today. I really do appreciate your time, and I hope you found today's show valuable. If you would like to receive these shows automatically to your phone or to your computer, simply go to iTunes and subscribe. After listening to several of the shows, if you're so inclined, please leave us a five-star rating, as this helps us reach additional people and spread the message. If you're truly committed to taking your life to the next level and doing whatever it takes to become a peak performer, but something's holding you back, something is blocking your way, and you just can't seem to figure out what it is, send me an email to info at thorconklin.com, and I'd be more than happy to get on the phone with you. We'll schedule a 15-minute discovery call. No obligation, no cost. I absolutely love to hear from the listeners, and if there's something I can do to help, I'd be more than happy to do that. Also, if you found something of great interest in today's show and you want to share that with your friends and family, simply go to my Facebook page, Thor Conklin, click on the episode, hit the share button, and share it on your page. You can follow me at Twitter at Thor Conklin. The website is ThorConklin.com. We're constantly adding new free resources, discussing additional tricks, tips, tools, and strategies on how to be a peak performer. Remember, I try to keep these episodes short so you can listen to them during dot time, doing other things, commuting, driving, walking, working out. Decide to be a peak performer in all that you do. And until tomorrow, have an absolutely amazing day. That concludes part one of our interview with Chantel Keith. Please stay tuned later this week for part two.